Twitter at Evil Dread Podcast or Evil Dread Pod, and you can interact with us there. Keep up to date with us with each new release. Send us questions, however you want to talk to us. We are now there for you. So sit back, enjoy this new episode. It's finally October, and we have a great show for you today. Thanks. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Evil Dread. I'm Lynn. And I'm Wyeth, and it's finally October. Oh my god, it's been October in my heart for months and months, I think but it's, it's here now. eternally October in your heart, actually. <laughs> so, what that means is we have some special surprises and treats for the October month. Mm-hmm. We're going to be doing double features. Um, pretty much every week. Today it was like a TV episode in a movie, mm-hmm. but it's going to be like double episodes every week. We're going to be doing some Halloween classics, some stuff that we think doesn't get enough attention, some kids Halloween stuff, which is always fun. I so. think we're this month is dedicated to just all fun movies. Yeah, nothing it's, serious. Mm-hmm. It's it's not about like the most disturbing or the most scary or the most creepy or whatever. It's more about like capturing the fun of Halloween yeah. in our picks. I mean, there are some scary things. It follows, which is coming up. Yeah. It's still top five. Is that five. next week? That's next week. I think so. Okay. And we're, we're going to be doing a really fun uh, pairing with a short film called Possibly in Michigan, mm-hmm. which um, a lot of people have thought that maybe David Robert Mitchell um, took inspiration from yeah. that short film. So- so we'll have to watch that. Yeah. Um, but, but this week, we watched a movie that is very near and dear to you. Oh, yes. I love this movie. Wyeth had never seen it. And we watched an episode of Boy Meets World because it has one of the greatest Halloween episodes of all time. <laughs> we watched, and then there was Sean. And then as there a, was Sean. As a precursor to The Guest. Yes. Uh, I think it was, it was a solid uh, afternoon of... of TV and movies, mm-hmm. of media consumption. I, it was a quality. Okay, so you want to start with, and then there was Sean? I would love to. <laughs> As someone who did not grow up on Boy Meets World, um, this was a whole new experience. Boy Meets World was one of my favorite shows as a kid, and like to the point where it exposed me to some things I probably shouldn't have been exposed to like at one what? point it's revealed that sean's mom was a stripper like it goes from like when Corey was like 12 to when he was like 25 mm-hmm. so there's a lot of like growing <laughs> that is a wild <laughs> gap yeah yeah i remember like him having sex with topanga for the first time yeah i was i was too young for all that but and then there was sean as like the perfect boy meets world because it's like they're seniors in high school and uh it is a clear spoof and kind of homage to Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer Mm -hmm. and all these 90s slasher movies that were coming out and it's so funny. This is, this this like 20 minutes of TV was one of the most 90s things (laughs) I have seen. Everyone had like a beautiful like middle part bowl cut which Alana Glazer, all all the men. She, Alana Glazer calls that the gelled mushroom which (laughs) I see, I, I see that. <laughs> but yeah, it's perfect. So do you want to do a plot synopsis or do you want me to? Um, you can. Okay, you ta- I know you it by t- heart. This is, this is your week. No, okay, okay. You are our guide. All right. So supposedly, we watch this out of context and like apparently it's like actually has some continuity with the other episodes around it. It's not just standalone. Who could have seen that there was a whole connecting storyline? Yeah, to there's Boy like Meets a World. meta overarching. Not plot. I. <laughs> so Corey and Topanga have broken up, I guess. So Corey is like not speaking to her, and he's like, "Sean, get in between us in class or whatever." And Sean's like, "You guys are my only stable uh, relationship in my life, so <laughs> I'm upset about this." <laughs> to anyone who did not grow up watching this show, that was just gibberish. Okay, but in the background of Boy Meets World, Sean is like comes from a bad home life and is always over at the Matthews house. So yeah, like. Corey and Topanga are like his Wyeth and Al, where they are like, you know, Mm -hmm. a solid relationship, and he doesn't want to have to pick between them, and you know? 
But he would pick Corey, honestly. Wow, that's, that's quite a hard-hitting <laughs> real-world example. Yeah. Anyway, though, so um, Sean is, like, upset, and it's, get, it's I, I don't know if it's Halloween in the show. Um, I don't think so. Okay. But, um, so they're in Mr. Feeney's class. Mr. Feeney gives them all the attention. And um, he leaves the room, and they come to find out they're locked in. There's a creepy janitor. There's a killer around. And it's so, like... Sean, it's very much like Scream in the way that Sean's like, I've seen every horror movie. I know what happens. This kid, Kenny, we've never seen before. He's going to die first. And, yes, he's, that, and he's like, I wish you would please stop saying that. That, that janter looks like a mummified Mark Evan Jackson. Who the hell is that? Um, character actor. He plays um, Lieutenant Holt's husband in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, um, yeah. The... To the, dance his boss in the good place. So God in the good place. Yeah. Or, or the devil, whatever. Whatever. But, yeah. Which everyone should be watching the good yeah, place. Yeah, the good place is great. Uh, that's ne- neither of our personal picks this week, but it's very good. You should watch it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, it quickly turns into, like, a survival horror movie. <laughs> it's set at this high school. And Eric and Jack come in. Eric's my favorite. <laughs> so it's very silly. It's so silly. Jennifer Love Hewitt shows up. Mm-hmm. And she... proceeds to make out with a couple guys. Eric? Okay, she only makes out with Eric. You're slandering her name. She's like, I'm Jennifer Love Pfefferman. I'm new here. <laughs> and Eric sees her and he's like, you're probably the killer, aren't you? And she's like, I'm not. And then he immediately starts making out with her. As you do. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It was wild, but this is, it was such a funny episode. I was cackling. It's, it was as someone, again, who has no point of entry into the series beyond this. <laughs> it was, it was enjoyable. It was just a silly 20 minutes. It's so silly and so funny. And there's like a phone gag where someone calls in and is like, What's your favorite scary movie? And Jack is like, oh, that one with the babe from Party of Five. And they're like, Nev Campbell. And he's like, hell yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And um, the virgin joke. Because they're like, how do you survive a horror movie? And Sean's like, be a virgin. And Corey turns to to Topanga. And he's like... (laughs) Thanks for saving us. (laughs) Thanks for saving my life. And Eric's like... I'm not going to survive. <laughs> Jack's like, I'm not going to survive. And Sean's like, I'm going to like get as sick as possible to the point of death, but like barely like survive. Um, and then they shout out Mr. Feeney. They're like, ooh, Feeney died. Feeney Good for got Feeney. It. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, I loved it. Thank you for indulging the <laughs> stupidity this, of me making you watch This was not the most offensive them, so. thing you made me watch. Yeah. At, when we were planning this month, he was like, you're serious. Why are we? Why is a Boy Meets World episode on this list? I was I was quite confused. However, it's worth it, is it not? You can find it on Daily Motion. <laughs> Third it's, rate YouTube. Yeah, it's all for free on Daily Motion. <laughs> also, um, so is Halloween Town Two. If you don't have the DVD like me, I mean, who who would Calabar's have the audacity Revenge? of not owning? Such a masterpiece. Calabar's Revenge is the best of the series. There are four Halloween towns. Number two is the best one. Okay. Slow your roll. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more about that later this month, I'm sure. We're not watching it, but I'll, like, shoehorn it in. I'm sure it'll come up it now that you have this agenda. It could be a personal pick if I want. Yeah. Okay. So, would you recommend <laughs> Boy Meets World and then there was Sean? Sure. Especially if you have a... <laughs> Fun spot for like '90s high school nostalgia. Yes. Oh, it's perfect. It's so good. Okay, I would also obviously because I picked it to watch. All right. Tell the, us about the other film we watched. We watched The Guest, um, directed by Adam Wingard, written by Simon Barrett, my favorite team working in Hollywood right now. Oh man. They they did Your Next, mm-hmm. and um, they've done VHS copies or no uh, segments yeah and then uh Blair Witch um I loved your next so I've always been wanting to see the guest and I've liked Dan Stevens who mm-hmm. is more or less the main guy yeah we we discovered uh while making a pizza to watch with this movie that we both love Downton Abbey mm-hmm it <laughs> that it was a very unexpected Venn diagram <laughs> I mean last week we we got Golden Girls Shout out. This week, we got Downton Abbey. We contain multitudes, man. Um, 
I am either, but Dan Stevens was so good the first two seasons. Yes. And then they brutally killed him off. He he did he wanted to go into movies and then he made this movie and then no one saw it. Yep. So um but it worked for the horror people and it also very much worked for me, if you know what I mean. Go ahead. We'll get into <laughs> that loaded comment. Because watching with Lynn was a loaded experience. It was a lot. I was ha- I was trying to control myself, and I was failing very much so. <sighs> Dear God, you like <laughs> you were constantly just making this noise, <laughs> just like at any any point where like Dan Steven is like slightly flexing a bicep or walking out of the bathroom like shirtless. I had to pause it because we needed to both be in the room when that scene happened. Or the but the moment where Lynn like truly like gasped for air, fanning herself was when Dan Stevens plays with like any knife. Oh, that is hot, dude. It's it's too much for me. This movie's too much. This has been Fun Facts with Lynn. Mm-hmm. You're knowing a little bit too much about me right now, listeners. Anyway. Wyatt, give us a plot summary. So, uh, the movie centers around this family. Um, mom, dad, daughter, son. Mm-hmm. And they they had another son, but he was um, supposedly killed in war. Yep. Um, one day, Dan Stevens shows up and tells the family that I served with your I served with your son, and he was a good friend of mine. And he kind of slowly integrates himself into the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, of course you can stay. Oh, you just got discharged. Totally, come they, stay with they us." They immediately trust the stranger on he, the door step. <laughs> he becomes like everyone's emergency contact in this family. Oh, also. so quickly! <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, so he kind of insidiously, like, digs his claws into this family until, like, no one wants to ask him to leave. Like, Mm -hmm. like, everyone trusts him except the daughter, whose name is Anna, played by Micah Monroe, a modern-day scream queen, Mm -hmm. because she is the star of It Follows. I love her so much. She's so good. She's amazing. She's, like, a super babe in this movie, too. She's, like, super goth. Love it. She okay. Also, they only listen to like goth, uh, techno, synth pop, mm-hmm. like in this movie, which is amazing. The score for this movie is bananas. I do. I do love some synth pop. Yeah, with some yeah. breathy whispering. Women. Women. Yeah, <sighs> nailed it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you don't like synth music, step off. Maybe not. Yeah, the, like it's only the greatest. Anyway. So she's kind of suspicious of him. Um, the mom kind of pressures her into taking him to a party where she realizes, damn, I want to get all up in him. Because he's able to <laughs> carry two kegs around and not breathe heavily afterwards. Yeah, which, which is which a lot. <laughs> after having rolled one keg along the floor and needing like a day to recover. Yeah, I, I feel like... Dan Stevens and the guests may be a bit stronger than you, Wyatt. That is not that hard. Also, he, like, hits a blunt really sexily. And she's, like, into it. Okay? <laughs> There's a lot of neon lights in this neon movie. Neon lights. There's a lot of smoke. Slow motion smoke. <laughs> it really is, like... I feel like Nicholas Winding Refin or whatever tried to do this shit with the Neon Demon and it just was creepy and like pedophilic and <laughs> like gross. This movie is where you go if you like them neon lights, if you like that poetic cinema, if you like that slow motion, those blood stains, everything. Lynn was clutching her pearls this whole movie. If I had any pearls, I'd clutch them. I would. They've been clutched. Anyway. I'm uncomfortable with, Say you, more. with, with your inflection in that statement. <laughs> Say more about this movie. What else happens in this um, movie? <laughs> so, gradually, it's revealed that Dan Stevens is actually not... David. The well, name of his character. Mm-hmm. No. Well, maybe. I don't know. Okay, that's the thing about this movie. They do not give you, like, an answer. Mm-hmm. They're, it's very, like, still up in the air. He definitely served with... I think they de- that he definitely served with the, the son of the family. So, what but, happens is, it's explained towards the end, but, like, 
he ends up killing some people in town to like, and he sends Micah Monroe's boyfriend to jail. He buys a lot of guns off one of her friends and then kills him and the gun dealer. It's like, it starts escalating. All the while, the younger brother, Luke, is um, like getting into fights at school and getting bullied mm-hmm. and everything. And he's like, hey, just do what I do. Take a knife to school. Stab if, someone. If they fuck burn with their you, house. Burn their house with down their with family. the family in it. What are they going to do? <laughs> and he's that, like, that scene yeah, is man. like a Tumblr post that escalates. <laughs> hey, take a day off. Drink some water. Fight someone. <laughs> Bury their body in the woods. Change your name. Move across country. Move in with a military family yeah. and, and insinuate yourself so, into that. So yeah, it basically is revealed that Dan Stevens is like born identity. Basically, yeah. So Mike Monroe is like, there's something up here. So she calls the uh, army base and they're like, he's dead. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of sets off a flag, red flag for like the army people. So they send people out and to get him. Of course it's Lance Reddick because when yes. you think shadowy organizations, you go to... Lance Reddick. Yes, isn't it Fringe. like Detective Broyles on Fringe? Mm, Fringe, um, the hotel manager from John Wick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's great in this movie. Mm-hmm. I love it. There's some really good, like, smaller character actors in this movie that are awesome. But, um, so yeah, like, the, the military comes to get him. That sets off a very intense chain of events where both of the parents are killed. I was not expecting that. A diner is blown up mm-hmm. where where Mike Monroe works. And then it all culminates in a beautiful, intense and lovely, amazing uh, sequence at a Halloween dance. And the the budget for so there the son's in high school and he got detention. And the school budget for this Halloween dance is easily in... 100000 f- Easily. <laughs> it looks so good, This dude. is like theme park level attraction. It's amazing. It's like a quality <laughs> Amazing house. because it's a Halloween maze. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to like get to the brother, they have to go through a Halloween like haunted house maze. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, like, red walls and then clowns and, like, splattered blood, neon lights and mirror rooms oh, and strobes. Every minute is a different room. It's and so it must have stretched on for a mile. I loved it so much. So uh, David kind of tracks them down there. And the final showdown is, like, Mike Monroe versus David, Dan Stevens. And, and there's, like, fog. There's, like... Synth pop. Yeah. <laughs> there's fire. It's ever- Thing. It is the coolest. I, mm, yeah, it's just the best representation of like Halloween aesthetics. It's it's the purest glimpse into the heart of Lynn. It is. It's like that's what my head looks like on the inside. Sounds about right. Yeah. It's is it, so is it a is it Punky Man sitting at a reception desk? Yes, it says mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that pose too. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, um, but then it is revealed before he's killed by uh, Lance Reddick that um, both David and the brother were in some kind of medical experiment through the military, but they never go into really what it is. So it's kind of like making super soldiers or whatever, but like reprogramming yeah. them mentally. So if he feels threatened, he's going to do anything to like survive, keep his identity intact. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Tell Um, us about that ending, though. I'm thinking. Okay. So, in the ending, it's kind of a twist. The brother and sister survive, but did David? Yeah, yeah. Um, It makes you think that he's killed, he, like, goes to sleep. Well, no, his, like, eyes are still open, but he, like, looks like he's dead. Mm -hmm. And he tells Luke, he's like, you did the right thing, Don't, don't feel bad, like... Yeah. I would have done this too. Which is so weird and complicated and like gives them the final gives them a real gives ter- them a thumbs up. Terminator two thumbs up. <laughs> so they're in the ambulance and um they see a firefighter walk out with a limp, which David had, mm-hmm. and then they see through the, the gas mask that it's him. And the movie ends. And I found that really frustrating. Okay. He's, he's ten feet from them. I know. And, and like, the last line is Mike Monroe going, what the fuck? 
and then cut to cut credits, yeah. which is okay. Funny. All right. That but, felt yeah. that felt jarring. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an odd movie, but it, it is I very it. odd. It's um, just because he's both the antagonist and the main character. Mm-hmm. I well, Michael Monroe is obviously the hero. She's the final girl, but. David definitely has way more screen time. Yeah, it's like, I I love him, but also he's like, a, you know, government spook killer. Yeah, he's definitely, like, you root for him when he's helping the family yeah. in this weird yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we talk about the uh, the younger brother gets sent to, like, the office, and he's going to get expelled for fighting, and um, David's like, what happened, man? He's like, this kid called me a slur that I'm not going to repeat. and But he was teasing him about being gay, and he's like, so I broke a yardstick across his face. And David's like, okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, encouraging, but in like the wrong sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then he kind of like blackmails the principal mm-hmm. to be like, this is a hate crime, and you're just letting this happen, and you're punishing this this queer youth <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and he's like, I didn't even know he was gay. It's like it's really interesting. But that kinda becomes the movie's undoing because Luke is like, Hey, we're best friends. I know you probably killed all these people, but that's cool. I don't care. Because we're anyway, friends. My sister's looking into you and she, here's all the people that she's told about yeah, you. She thinks that you might be like evil, so <laughs> So I'm just going Reveal. Yeah, Luke is um the worst. He's a day ex machina in the worst way. That's true. Mm-hmm. Other things about this movie. Um. Overall, I liked it. There's the pacing felt off though. Okay. In what way? Um, like I don't disagree. The but... first half feels really great. Like there's the suspense of him working his way into the family. And it's the like the music does a good job of like making it seem like something's lurking, mm-hmm. simmering. Yeah. And then there's shots of him just like staring into middle space and Which just is terrifying. Make me go crazy. They're okay. wild. They're so scary. And he's just off. Like he'll ask a question and then like stare too long. Mm-hmm. Or like it goes on for one beat too long to like make it seem threatening it's really well done i think dan stevens does a freaking awesome oh, yeah. job in this movie he really stole the movie but then it's revealed that like there's government connections mm-hmm. and i feel like once the movie expanded to like outside the home mm-hmm. it lost a lot of the momentum okay i kind of agree i think it's jarring to go from like this very intimate like Set in Mor- Moriarty, New Mexico, mm-hmm. small town. A lot to... of open landscapes to the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah, which was like, oh shit, okay, interesting. I don't know, I wish, if it had incorporated that, I wanted more hard and fast explanation, you know, mm-hmm. to the backstory. If we're getting into the backstory, give me some, some info. I would have, I would have done away with the openly discussing the backstory and instead i would have loved that things were more vague yeah either one or the other you know like we're in a weird middle space where they give us some background and like some explanation but it doesn't really make sense or you know fill us all in or they could have done like who the hell is this guy yeah like like rather than seeing him like kill the people like kill the the arms dealer mm -hmm. that ethan embry who I love. Go ahead. Well, like, I'd rather just, like, that be reference is happening, and then maybe, like, a slow pan under the bed to show all the guns. Ooh. Ooh. I could see that. And, like, so the momentum and the suspense stopped midway, mm-hmm. and I think they could have, like, kept building to that great finale. I think some of the fear, not that this is a scary movie. I mm-hmm. don't think this is a scary movie. It's, like, a really cool horror thriller but um i don't i wouldn't even call it horror i just like a great genre movie okay um i just i feel like it could have been so much scarier if he came out of the blue you know and we didn't know anything about him Mm -hmm. rather than he could just be like a weird drifter posing as yeah uh this guy this military family's like son's friend or whatever Mm -hmm. i don't know I do think it's 
I loved, it, this sounds weird, but I loved the violence in this movie because it wasn't over the top. Like, it wasn't, like, gratuitous, but yeah. it was fast and, like, satisfying and weirdly turned me on. I liked it. <laughs> um, I'm, He's good with a gun. How's he, that? He is. Like, the, the gun moments were well done, but also... He's also good I with wanted more of a... Oh <laughs> I wanted more of, like, an emotional attachment to... To who? The people who killed? Like, especially the parents. Oh, yeah. I didn't give a damn with the parents dying. Like, they they get so casually offed, mm -hmm. and that was really jarring to me. Yeah. Well, the dad's a piece of shit. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> well, that, he was a bad dad. And the mom was very, like... There was some weak writing in the mom and the dad that I think could have been remedied. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know, like, why the dad was so pissed off all the time and like grating and it jarring. was just a just a wally loman yeah. willy is it willy loman willy loman yeah. you know you come for horror movies we give you downton abbey and death of a salesman <laughs> references that's what you're in for anyway um yeah and the mom was kind of a non-character she just like when we did see her all she did was cry yeah I'm like, I thought that would, I thought it was, I was kind of hoping to, like, she, the movie opens on her grieving, mm -hmm. and I would like to have seen her work through her art. I was hoping for, like, a family comes together to yeah. solve a threat. Or even she, it, it, it could have been interesting if she put more emphasis on him as replacement for the son. Mm -hmm. Like, that would be interesting. Like, her, like, kind of doting on him, which they do a little bit, but it's not even... To the point where it's like, oh, that's what this is supposed to be. You know, it was yeah. more like a missed opportunity. Because, I mean, here's someone who's the same age as your son. He went through the same things. He's, like, s standing in his place to be like, he told me to tell you he loved you and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I think that's what makes her let him stay, obviously. Yeah. But, like, I think that could have been explored a little bit more to give the mom depth. Going back to the violence, there's the bar fight scene, mm -hmm. which... I loved and didn't like. All right. So elaborate, please. David takes Luke. They stalk the bullies who've been just brutalizing Luke. Mm -hmm. They follow them to a bar, and David instigates a fight with the with this other group of kids. Yeah. And just the way it was shot off to me it was very like it's there was one shot that really kind of like took me out of it mm -hmm. it was kind of jarring it was like david looks back at the camera and there's like a quick zoom like midway into his face and it was very like i don't know like bad kung fu movie yeah that's that's it <laughs> yeah like they would they were like the reactions were off for like a split second for mm -hmm. every movement mm -hmm. and it's jarring yeah it's super stylized, mm -hmm. but I think it's kind of supposed to be that way because, like, he's... I haven't seen Iron Fist, but this is, like, why they explain that, like, the fight scenes are bad is because he moves, like, so fast or, like, he knows exactly what's going to happen mm -hmm. and he's, like, ready for it. So it's he's, like, not reacting. He's, like, reacting too fast to yeah. what's happening. So, like, I assume they're showing, like, what an amazing fighter he is mm -hmm. and, like, how skilled he is. But it just looks weird and jarring. Yeah. I, I was know. expecting... I don't know. I was expecting the fight scenes in this to be more... Even keel. And less, like, stylized. Well, it's not a super stylized movie mm -hmm. until, of course, the end. Which, like, has a reason to be stylized. Because it's, like, a Halloween dance or whatever. Yeah. Also, Ginger Snaps... Pay attention, because this is how you do a Halloween For dance the, climax, whoever's, okay? Whoever's out there listening. John Fawcett, um, the gal from American Mary. The people getting ready to remake <laughs> Chris Ginger Snaps. Chris Lemchi, who played um, Sam. Anyway, but yeah, that's how you do it. And it wasn't even, like, time for the dance. They were, like, getting ready for the dance, and it was still This was after school. Kick ass. Yeah, after school, the... It wasn't even the day of the dance. No, it wasn't. It was just the setting. And it was Luke amazing. was just in detention. Yeah, which, you know, you know how it'd be. No. But, uh... <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, but it's not a super stylized movie, which I feel like... Wingard Barrett movies 
they're not stylized super visually, but mm. they're very, like, there's a super specific tone of, like, humor and unpredictability, but still, like, threat. Yeah. That I love. I love those guys for that. I I really, I will always go to bat for Your Next, mm -hmm. which yeah. is such a great movie. That, yeah, it's iconic. That, because I, I went in not knowing what to expect, mm -hmm. but I heard a lot of people saying to do that. Yeah. And I was really pleasantly surprised and happy that I didn't know anything going on. I in. thought, Your Next is the perfect Thanksgiving movie. I know it's not on Thanksgiving, it's an anniversary, but it's like a bunch of assholes having dinner. <laughs> 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 like this really shitty white family who's just getting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ripped to shreds in the wilderness. It's yeah. a perfect Thanksgiving film. Why is... Anyway. But yeah, this I feel like this is a worthy successor to your next. I wouldn't put it exactly on the same level. Yeah. I like your next slightly better than this movie. Same. Um But they're also different. Like your next is a traditional home invasion movie. This isn't. Like I'm, this might be poor taste, but Ooh, hit me. On on a spectrum of your next um the guest and Blair Witch. <laughs> How is that poor taste? I don't. I don't. Just know. ranking this dude's movies. I'm not ranking them. I'm just. I'm. I can see like the shift from. It feels kind of like a shift from substance to style. Because I wasn't mm. a fan of Blair Witch because it felt so stylized and less gritty. See. It felt slick. Here's my question. Well, it's not a question. Here's my thoughts. I think they were so limited by going into an established um, entity, you know? Like, it had to be handheld. It yeah. had to update all of our expectations, so they had to use drones and all this shit. So I don't... I feel like they work so much better with original content because it's, like, mm -hmm. more adept to their strengths, which is writing... Stuff like I mean, that. Poor, yeah, I can see that. Poor Adam got brutalized by Death Note people. Oh, I haven't seen Death Note. I haven't but... either, but he started getting, I mean, with uh, internet nerd culture, death threats started coming into him. Oh, God. So that's why he quit Twitter. Shit, I yeah. didn't know that. That sucks. I mean, I'm not going to talk about... Shit, I don't know much about, so I don't know if Death Note's good or not. I mean, it got poor reviews, but, you know, whatever. It did have a lot going against it immediately because of the whitewashing controversy, which I understand, you know, like, I don't know. I just, I wish he would go back, him and Simon would go back to original content mm -hmm. rather than working off a um, title or, a, like, known yeah. property because that limits them so much. I mean... If you're interested in something, go for it. Yeah, it's true. I just don't think it... I feel like, not to... Because Tim Burton has been, like, terrible lately. But his original films are so much more superior mm -hmm. to his, like, version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Or his version of Planet of the Apes or whatever. It's like... He succeeds in quality more when it's... Yeah, it's his like... Own ideas. Why, um... Like, Frankenweenie was really great. Yeah, yeah. No one saw it, though. Mm-hmm. But everyone went and saw his, um, his Tim Burton factory produced, like, yeah. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, Which is, like, it's kind of like a Soderbergh thing where it's, like, one for them, one for me, but, like, it's not very good. <laughs> like, still, you know, Soderbergh's popular movies are fun and enjoyable to watch. I don't think he's made, like, a bad movie. Tim Burton? No, it's Soderbergh. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying oh. some are, like... For the populace. Okay. You know? Like, he'll, yeah. he'll make an Oceans movie and then make, you know... Something more experimental. Yeah, yeah the Girlfriend Experience Oof. or whatever. Yeah. Or the Solaris remake. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is all to say that um, this is the most recent Adam Wingard movie that has been not based on an established property. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just the, the level of, like, quality is so much better i don't know i still yeah this is a very much worthwhile movie mm -hmm. like it has a lot going for it i love this movie dude i, I, I recognize it has flaws but um yeah it's just so 
fun and weird and like interesting. I can definitely see uh, how your student said she was getting anxiety because you played the soundtrack <laughs> I for did. your class. I look when they do free rights. I play movie music. I played them the Handmaiden score. I played them Interstellar the score. Like That's a good we're one. you know we go for it. And this is like the first time I did it because I'm like this score is bangs. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna listen to it. And this girl is like this is giving me anxiety. And I'm like um deal with it. <laughs> I'm not gonna turn it off. Sorry, but um. Yeah, speaking of, like, the soundtrack. Oh, it's good. I'm going, I'm going to listen to it. So good. It has, um, there's, like, a really amazing, um, one thing Winger does really well in this is, like, syncing music cues to, like, mm -hmm. what's happening. And not in, like, an Edgar Wright, like, over-the-top stylized way. Yeah. It's not, like, Baby Driver or something. Oof. But <laughs> I liked Baby Driver. I know you didn't, but yeah. anyway, um, I just wish it was about John Hamm and Eights of Gonzalez instead of like that dumbass. I just wanted John Boyega as the main character, yes, which so apparently good. we almost had. We almost did, but uh, there's a there's a part in in the guest where um, like Mike Monroe is leaning back listening to the song um, "Haunted When the Minutes Drag" by Love and Rockets, and I know that because I've been listening to it a lot lately. Um, and it, like, goes from her, like, kind of mooning over him and being like, mm -hmm, like, on her bed. Like, I'm sorry, what? Ah. <laughs> and then it goes outside, and she's all, like, dreamy and everything. Goes outside and goes outside his window, and he's, like, given that, like, Kubrick stare. That, like, that dead-eye mid... Jack Torrance yeah, stare. Yeah, yeah, and just, like, sitting there doing nothing except staring out the window. And it's so scary, and it's so perfect, because mm -hmm. it, like, lines up right when they're, like, the chorus kicks in. So oh, good. there's some, like, gut-dropping musical cues. Yes! Like, when it's just, like, Yeah! It's just, like, Ugh. Yeah! <laughs> or it gets so loud and, like, mm -hmm. intense, and then they'll cut to, like, the Sandias being completely silent. Yeah. Or something. Also, like... I do have a soft spot for this movie because I live in Albuquerque for a long time and this is set and filmed in Moriarty, which is 25 minutes outside of Albuquerque on the other side of Sandia Mountains. So it's really cool. And I like can attest that like there, I'm sure there is like arms dealing that happens out there. <laughs> Just in random quarries, yeah. I mean, I went out there and shot guns. Really? At one point. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm trying to picture you using a gun. I not, have not used not guns multiple surprising. times. <laughs> Good for you. I mean, I'm not like secret agent, demon, the secret gunslinger over mind here, mind control guy. Level. I appreciate that about you. Thank you. Okay, other things about this movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh no. Um, there is a your next mask in the party. There scene. It is the one that I have hanging over my bed. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And um, during the climax at the Halloween dance. In the background is huge uh, images of the three silver shamrock masks from Halloween 3, mm -hmm. Season of the Witch. Silver shamrock. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at that party, Dan Stevens just brutalizes another man. and Everyone loves it. Yeah, <laughs> like they almost start clapping for him. I love it. Yeah, well, he was an a, asshole. A girl, a girl bangs him for it. Not unrealistic, mister. I did. Oh, okay, what, like, what, what, like, I can't what? believe he didn't get laid more in this movie. How's that? <laughs> Michael Monroe, she should, she would have regretted it later, but she just, she could have done what she had to do. Well, for her sake, I'm glad she didn't sleep with the man who ended up killing her parents. Yeah, that would have been scarring, but in the moment, she would have gotten it. Mm, anyway, other things. The worst morning after feeling. <laughs> um... I feel like there's a version of this movie where they do bang. Are you going to go on the journey for this? No, I just think probably in the early drafts mm -hmm. that happened. I can see that. I love that it, it turns from her being suspicious to her being like totally into him to her being like, maybe not, and then like <laughs> killing him. She doesn't kill him, Luke nope. does. But... Surprise. Yeah, which is so With weird. the knife that he gave him. Yeah, ooh, that butterfly knife, though. Here's a knife. Take it to school. Yeah. Stab your stab stab your enemies. <laughs> Burn their houses down. Kill their family. I love that scene. Like 
carving pumpkins very very seasonally on point mm -hmm. very um wholesome and he's like your parents knives suck and he pulls out a butterfly just knife and is like <laughs> <laughs> yep the noise you just heard was lynn's actual butterfly knife yeah it's here it's right here it, she has just stabbed it into the table yeah there's a lot of points where they'll be like david are you really an evil you know government person to and he'll like killers. chuckle while holding a knife yeah he's like <laughs> and like rubs his mouth while holding like a kitchen knife like and I'm into the it. noises you made <laughs> were made me so uncomfortable oh my god i'm sorry i mm, this movie's a lot it sounded like me eating like a good hamburger <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. Can you tell how passionate we are about this film? And when I say we, I mean me? Mm-hmm. Okay. For reasons that probably don't need to be, uh, no, that can we're, be, we're okay. reasons that can be inferred. Yeah, I guess. So, would you, would you actually recommend this movie? I, I'm of very course I would. I'm very unclear about your stance. Shut up. Of course I would. If you're someone who appreciates a good man, just to look at. Yeah. So there's some real man candy on if, display. <laughs> yeah. If if you're into like like kind of kind of scary things. Like if you were to take Ryan Gosling's character from yes, Drive. I was gonna say that he's like Royd chaotic Himopo, evil. Royd Ryan Himopo Gosling. Level and like yeah, make him evil. Chaotic evil Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. That's Dan Stevens in this movie. Like he's the iconic American male. Like, blonde, blue-eyed. Which I usually hate. Mm hmm But here he's, like, so, like, the dark side of it. Yeah, because he's, it's a subversion of the ideal it's nuclear like, family yeah. child. Oh, if you're, like, a really amazing American soldier, you have to be, like, a psychopath, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? well, I think that says something about, like, the violence of Americans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, beneath this perfect exterior, there's something... Yeah. Darker alert. But if you take it home. That's why. I was expecting the violence to be more like drive. Oh, okay. Like, How would you characterize that violence as compared to this one? Like the guest feels very wham, wham. Mm -hmm. And then like but in an awkward way, like it comes at you and you're not expecting it to be in that way. While drive is surprising, but it's very stylish. But Did also, you say it's like slow? I think the, the violence in Drive is like torturous because it's, it's so. Yeah, it is slow. Well, like I'm thinking of specifically when. Like Brian Cranston. Yeah, when they slit I Brian Cranston's yeah. arm, and it's so like. It's, it's jar like surprising. But it's so quiet and mm -hmm. like not. I don't know. Yeah, I was expecting it to be this movie to be more like. Quiet violence, like Drive, mm -hmm. but this is this is more like John Wick violence, like it is it is headed there. Yeah, like but in Second I, Gear or whatever. But John Wick has basically perfected stylized yes. violence. Oh my god, I love those movies those so much. Best double feature. Mm -hmm. This and John Wick also both like look like they take place in two thousand six. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, I don't know. I appreciated that, and probably wasn't on purpose. But it looked like this came out in like twenty fourteen. Yeah. But it looked like all of the trends just hadn't reached Moriarty yet, which is true. Like I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it was... it's just like everyone's like five years so, behind. So you're stylistically. saying this whole film looks like George Bush was still president? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Like <laughs> there's crop tops, but they're not high waisted jeans under them. That there is full girls, bellies girls out. Girls wear, wearing those like thin black bands around their, their yeah, forehead. Yeah, headbands. It's just I, I don't know. I haven't seen that in a long time. It looked really like oddly dated, and also the bullies wore like three polo shirts, all with the collars popped. It was said things disgusting. like what was it what's up bitches or yeah <laughs> yeah i i hated them i was so glad when they when they got their come up with yeah i mean anna michael monroe looked really cool but luke looked like me in seventh grade he had like a shaggy like real jim halpert season two yeah hair. and like only wore hoodies and mm -hmm. shit yeah whiny whiny luke Oh God, he was Granted, the worst. Granted, Luke got a pencil stabbed into the back of his neck, which and he is, didn't react at all. Which is uh, what he did to David. 
Oh shit. That's also what happened in Boy Meets World. <laughs> There's a lot of Where pencils it's being, coming together. being used as weapons yes. today. Uh, That's the theme. The, you, the theme you found in it. Boy Meets World, when this kid gets stabbed in the head with a pencil and dies, Corey's like, well, I will always remember how tall he was. Because <laughs> it marks up against a wall. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. So yes, you recommend it. I would oh, definitely absolutely. recommend this movie. It's It's not perfect, but it's definitely... Like a very fun watch. It's super satisfying. Mm-hmm. It's, I would rather watch, and not to say this is bad, I would rather watch a mediocre, original, ambitious, ambitious, movie. interesting story than a really good Marvel movie, you know? Like, I would rather take a chance on The Guest, mm-hmm. or like something like Little Sister, which we talked about earlier. Yeah. Like, something weird and interesting. And, you know, mm-hmm. like, it may not live up to my expectations. I think the guest lives up to my expectations, but... Come for Dan Stevens, stay for the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, so... Anything else? That's about it for the guest. Mm-hmm. But uh, you have some, some very um, strong opinions about a recent Netflix movie yes! from one of your favorite directors. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I have two personal picks today. I don't know if Wyatt has any personal picks. Maybe he'll think of one in the next ten minutes. I, I have something I'll talk about. Okay. Um, so first off, I'm well, I'll lead with kind of the less applicable thing, which is I downloaded Cuphead, and it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, don't play video games. I can't remember the last time I bought a video game. This might be the first time. Um, but it is a run-and-gun boss battle game, and it is hand-animated hand-drawn, like, animation cells, and it is in the style of, like, 30s cartoons, mm-hmm. like Steamboat Willie, and it's so amazing. It looks really interesting. The soundtrack is, like, like, <laughs> very, like... <laughs> very 1930s. Yeah, yeah, 30s jazz, like, all the bass, yeah, boss battles, the bass battles. Oh, man, <laughs> get <Getting> fishy. <laughs> oh, Oh my god, all the boss battles are so cool, and they're all different, like, I just got done, like, fighting two frogs who have, uh, um, boxing gloves on, oh, man. and now I'm fighting, like, a woman who turns into a plane, and it's, like, astrological themed, mm-hmm. and I'm in a plane, and I'm a cup with a, with a body, it's just so isn't fun. It, isn't it, like, two brothers who's, two brothers who are cups who sold their souls to the devil mm-hmm. or something like that? They go gambling, and, uh... They're, they're on a streak, and the devil's like, I own this casino. Maybe uh, if you win this round, I'll give you all the money I have. And they're like, yeah, and they, like, throw the dice or whatever. And, of course, it's snake eyes. So the devil's like, I have your soul. Unless you can go and get every one of the collect all these souls that I've won from all these other people throughout this weird land or whatever. Mm-hmm. So every boss is someone you're collecting soul. their soul for the devil. So it is kind of genre. It's kind it of horror based. I feel like you're a little cut boy. The, the devil has a soul to claim is a real horror yes. staple. Can we the intersection of the horror community and the blues? Yeah, totally. Um, this is off topic, but I realized yesterday that Wyeth also loves my chemical romance. I I don't know why that was ever in doubt. I don't know. I just thought you didn't. I, I thought you were judging me really hard. Nope. I've I've been listening them to to them longer than you have. Okay. Well, you're older than me, but I anyway. Know. Going by numbers. So speaking of, like selling your soul to the devil or whatever. <laughs> did you ever hear about the backstory for Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge nope. and Demolition Lovers? I I never really got into their older stuff. Okay. I only like their older stuff, honestly. But um. So, I guess we're also talking about Michael Chemical Romance today. Sorry. Welcome to Seeing Kids <laughs> Grown Up. <laughs> it's, like, applicable, though, because it's, like, the best iteration of, like, selling your soul to the devil. So, um, the last track of the first album is called Demolition Lovers, and it's about, like, like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing. They're, mm-hmm. like, on the run. And they get gunned down in the desert, and the, the guy sells his soul to the devil to, like, resurrect the girl. And mm-hmm. he's like, okay, but you have to bring me the souls of a hundred evil men. So all of the second album, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, every song is a different person huh. that he's, like, killing and collecting their soul. And then the last one's him. 
because he's evil now. Well, that's sad. It's so good, though. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Anyway. Anyway, going back to Cuphead. <laughs> that is, this has been Older Scene Kids. Thanks yeah. for listening. Yeah. Um, 1930s animation has always creeped me out. Really? Like, it's always been very unsettling to me. And I think, like, when I was little, I remember seeing some animations that style and being really scared by it. Like, I think it was about, like, Jack Frost or something. It was this really creepy, sinister Jack Frost character coming around looking in these kids' windows. <laughs> and, like, six-year-old or however old wife could not handle it. Okay. And okay. since then, I've always found, like, Steamboat Willie style to be very unsettling. They're very, like, over-expressive and, like, jarring and janky. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Cuphead's cute, though. I don't know. I mean, sure. It, it, it looks it's not really your good. Thing, but it's, it's not my personal aesthetic, but I can admit it's well done. I love it. It's really fun. It's hard as shit. Mm-hmm. I like have to try fifteen to twenty times each each round. Also, like you have unlimited lives. Oh, that's good. So it's not like whoop, 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 whoop. sends you back to the very beginning. No, absolutely not. You just be like, oh, you're dead now. Retry. Mm-hmm. Retry, and then I do for like an hour. Well, perseverance. Yeah. But it's not, I hate video games mostly because one, like, they scare me. Two, um, what? I don't like failing at things. Okay. And I get frustrated very easily and I won't do, I like won't try again. But this one's like fun to the point where like I'll keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And like when I lose, I don't get pissed off. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I make a lot of noises when I'm playing it. Anyway, so Cuphead, really good. $20 mm-hmm. on Steam. I bought it with my own money. Okay. Um, second one, which is actually applicable to this podcast. Yes. Um, Gerald's Game came on Netflix, uh, directed by Mike Flanagan, who is one of my faves. Um, I loved Hush, Wyeth didn't, which I still don't know why you don't. I don't think it's that well made of a movie, but that's that's for another time. Okay. You liked Oculus, though. Yeah, and I thought Oculus Ouija was well too. done. Did you watch Ouija 2? I've been meaning to. He kind of, like... I haven't seen Ouija 2 either, but he, like, made this, like, sequel to this shitty movie, and it turned out amazing, supposedly. One of my favorite Tumblr posts is, if the Ouija series can have a redemption arc, then so can you. Oh, that's nice. Because it goes from, like, a 20% of Rotten Tomatoes to a high 80. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mike Flanagan is really an MVP of modern horror. So he just released um, Gerald's Game on Netflix, which is the second Stephen King adaptation of September. Mm-hmm. We also went to see it again this weekend, and it still holds up. It's amazing. Except call out to the Stillwater Theater for having the darkest display settings. It was, yeah, it was like a really terrible print. It was an awful I experience. couldn't tell what was happening. My eyes hurt. Like, I'm end. so glad we already saw it. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, um, so Mike Flanagan does an adaptation of Stephen King's novel, Gerald's Game, which is about a woman and her husband who are kind of having some marital issues, and they go out to their, like, cabin on the lake, and it's very nice for a whole weekend, and no one's around, and uh, they get into a little kinky sex play, and he handcuffs her to the bed, of uh, like, the, the headboard, so, like, one, there are two sets of handcuffs, like, she cannot move, like, her arms are spread out. And, um, he gets a little too intense, and she's like, I don't like this, I don't like this, let me out. And he's like, what if I don't? And she's like, you have to? And he's like, what if, like, no one can hear you? And all this. And he's, like, being really creepy, and she, like, discovers he has this kind of, like, rape fantasy, and she's not cool with it. And he's like, is this what it takes now? Like, everyone thinks we're a perfect couple, and they, like, get into a fight and everything. And, um, he has a heart attack and dies. Yep. And she's stuck. That premise sounds awful. It's so scary. And this is, like, supposedly was considered an unfilmable novel because it all takes place in her head. There Hmm. is no action that happens in in the novel Mm -hmm. other than, like, her perspective and her, like, hallucinating and going crazy. But, um, so Gerald dies. uh, Well, all of this stuff that happens um, before is really important. So, like, they leave, they, uh, when they're driving, they see a stray dog, and she gives it some meat outside, and, um, 
she leaves it there and then like he leaves the door open front door is open and what? yeah what? so the dog comes <laughs> in starts eating gerald and that's when she kind of snaps and like loses it yeah um he took a viagra and it made him thirsty so he put a glass of water on the shelf above her head mm -hmm. so she has to get the water and she bought a new negligee and so the tag is on that shelf too so she gets the tag and she rolls it up and makes it a straw because she can't reach the oh wow it, it's amazing it's so good and it's like super obvious that it's from the guy who did hush mm -hmm. so i don't know if you'd like it because it's very much the same of like using what's around like rationalizing with yourself that kind of like thing I'm, I'm fine with that i just the story of hush never gelled for me okay well this has a really strong story so you may like it but um her negative thoughts become like gerald and he's talking to her and he's like just go to sleep it's fine like they'll find your body and you won't be able to do anything so just give up and then a version of her is there and mm -hmm. she's oh there's this amazing quote and it's like men aren't so much blessed with penises as cursed with them and we're gonna die here because of gerald's five inches oh my god <laughs> it's really amazing and when night comes she looks in the corner and there's this guy and he's like extremely tall and disfigured and he has a box full of um like bones and trinkets as as one does and she calls him the Moonlight Man, and she thinks that he may just be, he may be a hallucination, or he may be deaf, like, waiting for her in the night. And she knows that he's going to come back mm -hmm. every night, and the dog, like, whines and runs away when Ooh. he comes. She doesn't know if he's real or not. And well, um, Let's not spoil that, because the jury's still out whether or not I'll see it. Okay. Um, I did wake up the other morning and think he was in my room, so that's Jesus. scary. Like, that's, I did have that's nightmare. That's not a good sign. Um... What else? This, um, this premise just sounds terrifying. It's so scary. Like, and Carla Gugino does an amazing job. I believe job. that. This just sounds basically like the sex game version of 127 Hours. Yeah, it really is. Definitely. Which, if you ever wanted a sex game version of 127 <laughs> Hours, you're in luck. Um, my but, question is, why do, does she break her thumb? No. That's how you get out of handcuffs. No, okay. Do you want to leave the room for a second while I spoil it for our listeners? Do we, do we need to spoil it? I do, because it's too good, man. It's oh too good not to. Oh my god. We got, I gotta talk about this. <sighs> Fine. You can close your ears if you want. Why is leaving the room? This has never happened before. This, He's this like done with me. This is unprecedented territory. Okay. Close my door. Okay. So, um... Also, it flashes back onto her childhood where, uh, like, at their lake house when she was 12, her father um, sexually abuses her. And so it's very much about um, her coming to terms with that, and it talks about how he shackled her with silence and Gerald shackled her with both the handcuffs and, like, comfort and safety um, of, the, of being married to like a successful man and how she might have actually married her father because they're both lawyers they're very similar stuff like that um so the end of the movie she realizes she um finally has a she finally figures out how to get out so she smashes the um, glass of water and uses a shard to slit her wrist not to kill herself but um to lubricate the um the handcuff so she slits her wrist and the handcuff gets caught on the, her skin and it basically degloves part of her hand which is the scariest thing that's ever happened and i hate that i even have to say it but um it's very scary um so that's really gross and graphic and um and that he <laughs> tried to come back in but i'm not done <laughs> Um, that's really gross and graphic, and but she gets out, um, and she finally um, gets out of the handcuffs, and she passes out, unfortunately, like immediately afterwards. So when she wakes up, it's night, and the Moonlight Man's there, and she has to confront him, and she gives him her wedding ring, and says, you're not real, you're not real, you're just made of moonlight. 
And then it kind of, she escapes, she drives away, she gets out, she's in the hospital. She's kind of rebuilding her life, all of this stuff. She is still having nightmares, though, because she doesn't know whether or not he's real. And that's bothering her, because every night she sees him in her dreams or right before she goes to bed, stuff like that. And then she sees um, a newspaper headline that says this man has been arrested. He was a grave robber. He had sex with dead bodies. He was on a killing spree, and he just didn't kill her. And so she goes to his arraignment very, very end of the movie, and um, he hadn't said a word since he was arrested, and he has, like, this medical condition that makes him deform, and he's super, very tall, and um, she's like, hey, and gets his attention, and he turns around, and he says, you're not real, you're not real, you're just made of moonlight, like she said to him, and she says, you're smaller than I remembered, and then walks away, and it's so amazing. Okay, Wyeth men. Yeah. Did you did you get it all off your chest? I, I did. <laughs> so yeah, it's a great movie. Huh. Uh, yes. Well, maybe I'll look into it. Maybe you should before you listen to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> or you can just skip from like yep. 58 to 102 or something like that. I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> well, I, I have a recommendation with an asterisk. Um, I, I finally got around to reading Salem's Lot mm -hmm. by Stephen King. Um, okay. I'm about 50, 60 pages from the end. Okay. So we'll see how the end shakes out. How are you liking it? Um, I wasn't a fan. It starts off very slow. Okay. And, and I thought that, like, I really was kind of considering maybe just, like, skipping it. But then, once, like, things start to happen... Well, the whole plot revolves around a small main town. Surprise. Mm -hmm. cause it's that's... almost as if that's where they're all set. It seems like there's a trend. Um, and what if, like, vampires came to this small main town and started, like, infesting it from the inside out? Mm -hmm. And just the way it builds... Like, Stephen King does a great job of scale. Yes. And once and this is kind of like his first. This is one of his earlier novels, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And because there was an adaptation in the early '80s from Toby Hooper. Yeah, and which I hear I've always heard good things about that. Yeah, me too. But just the way like the horror builds over this town um, was the first time in a long time where I've been genuinely scared in a Ooh, book. Okay. Like I had to stop reading it at night. Okay. Um, it's... But why? Vampires aren't scary. I, I've i always considered that until until this book. Okay. What makes them scary? Um, the details. Mm -hmm. Like, books can always go into way more detail than movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just the way that King builds... Wait, you are aware this is a movie podcast. What? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, go ahead. What? But just the way that Stephen King builds this town and then starts to, like, corrupt it, mm -hmm. it feels, especially since, like, I've been around small towns a lot. Yeah. And, like, small towns have, like, really ugly secrets. Oh, yeah. They're terrifying. And what, and this book, whole book is, like, kind of the, what's now, it's kind of a cliche, like, every town has a dark secret. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now it just becomes, like, ratcheted up. Mm-hmm. By like this super evil. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I I don't usually recommend vampire stuff, but I'm really. Oh my god. I'm really enjoying Salem's Lot. Write it down. Why it liked something with vampires? In there's it. I there's rumors of a adaptation in the works. Cool. Well, I know Andy Machete wants to do um, Cut Cemetery. Hmm. So. I feel like he has a. Uh, Free reign. After, yeah. <laughs> after the next it It's movie. a king of songs right now. It is. Like, Gerald's Game is amazing. Um, it was amazing. Um, they're bringing, I think it's called, like, 1922 mm -hmm. to Netflix, which is... The Hulu series about the time travel was supposed to be good. The JFK assassination. Yeah, yeah, 11, 23, mm -hmm. 63, or whatever, something, yeah. whatever. But, um, too bad the... <coughs> my favorite. It's James Franco. Well, um, too bad my favorite... King works. 
couldn't get the proper treatment. What is that? The, the Dark Tower series. Oh. That's, that's my favorite book series okay. of all time. I'm excited about 1920 or whatever because um, it's about like a farmer who kills his wife and her ghost haunts him. Oh man! Into it. Is it is it Nicole Kidman? It seems like a I wish a, a current Nicole oh Kidman project. Oh my god, that would be so good. I think it's Thomas Jane and some some gal I don't know, mm. but yeah, it's gonna be great. So good. yeah, um, stay on the slot. I'll let you know how it wraps up. Cool. Can we um give a quick shout out to um some of our listening trends that have been happening? I would love to. <laughs> okay. This is kind of crazy, and I can't even believe it's I, really I happening. I don't understand how it's happening, yeah. Go ahead. But we have, like, listening um, notifications coming from, like, South Korea and Vietnam. So, hi. Hey, guys, listening from South Korea and Vietnam. That's amazing. I, I hope it's not just, like, bots. I, I hope, hope not. I hope it's actual people listening. Yeah, I mean, we've done our fair share of Korean horror. Maybe maybe we're just talking into an endless sea of bots. Don't disrespect our listeners like oh, that. Uh, if, if you are human, <laughs> we love you. Yes, if absolutely. If you are bots, don't enslave us. Thanks to everyone who listens. It's really, we... we don't do this for any reason other than it's fun and we love it. We like it. goofing around with horror. Yeah, but we're really actually very honored that people would take their time to listen to us be stupid. And so thank you. Talk about dumb shit. So uh, yeah, next week is It Follows and possibly in Michigan. Very excited for this. This is Wyatt's pick. It's going to be great. And then the next week's after that we're going to do as a preview Trick or Treat, Hocus Pocus, oh, Over the so Garden good. Wall, The Monster Squad, Paranorman. Oh my god. It's gonna be action packed. Oh yeah, Scary Godmother, which is my favorite. Oh my god. All the kids specials from, I from yesterday. I'm so excited about all of these. It's gonna be really good. Scary Godmother? I have no idea what that is. It's really good, Wyatt. It was a Cartoon Network special. So was Over the Garden Wall. Okay. They do great right. stuff. Okay. But yeah. Happy October. Happy um, October. Tune in for our for our next few weeks. Have a good have a good one. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye bye. Keely behaved like a man demented, obsessed, utterly lost. <laughs>